I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Um, fluctuating commodity prices and changing farm program regulations have made it easier and often desirable for producers to sh shift their acreage against various crops in response to the changing market conditions. Many traditional cotton acres have been shifted to either corn or soybean production in recent years in response to improved prices for those commodities. In addition, although this Roundup resistant trade has been widely adapted across the, the cotton belt, the development of the herbicide resistant weeds has made this trait less valuable to many of the producers. In fact, some are even considering planting conventional varieties to avoid having to pay that tra technology fee for a herbicide resistant trait that won't effectively control the weeds in their fields. Uh, so the objective of this study was to look at the growth and development and the agronomic performance of cotton when it's grown in rotation with soybean. And we're also conducting these various rotations under both a conventional production system where we're growing conventional varieties and uh, having no roundup in our herbicide regime and also a transgenic uh, production system where we have a transgenic variety and we're including Roundup in our production system. So we've carried out this study for the past four years, starting in 2012. Our experimental design was a randomized complete block with a split plot treatment arrangement. Our main plots were our two production systems, the transgenic versus uh, conventional uh, production system, and we replicated everything six times at, uh, our split plots were our, our uh, rotation schemes. The varieties that we grew for our transgenic cotton variety was Delta Pine 1252B2RF. For our conventional cotton variety was uh, MD25NE, which was developed by the late Dr. Bill Meredith and William Noakes at USDA ARS at Stoneville, Mississippi. And for our soybean varieties, we had a DK4744 Roundup ready uh, that we grew. As I said, we had two production systems here uh, for our transgenic or our uh, production system with Roundup for glyphosate. We grew the transgenic varieties, the transgenic Delta Pine cotton variety, and our transgenic soybean variety. For our conventional system uh, with no Roundup or glyphosate, uh, we grew our conventional uh, cotton variety, the MD25. We did not, we weren't able to get our hands on a conventional soybean variety, so we grew the transgenic, but treated it as a conventional and didn't apply any Roundup to it. As I said, we had our six rotational schemes. Uh, we grew cotton continuously four years of the study, soybean continuously for four years, cotton the first year, followed by soybean, cotton again, and then soybean the final, full, final year, Cotton, two years of soybean, followed by cotton the final year. Soybean, cotton, soybean, cotton. Soybean, cotton, cotton, and soybean the final year of the study. The data that we collected, uh, dry matter partitioning and canopy light interception every year of the study uh, during cutout. Leaf chlorophyll concentration, uh, we only collected that in 2015, but we also uh, did that at cutout lint yield and yield components and fiber quality every year of the study. Now, to save time, I'm not going to be presenting any of the data from 2012 because that's the first year of all these rotations, so there really wouldn't be a rotational effect. So I'm not going to be starting out with the 2013 data. And moving right into this for our dry matter partitioning data on 2013, you'll see for the two rotations where we grew cotton after soybean, we had on average a 12% taller plant than the plants in our continuous cotton rotation. And these all, all these measurements on cotton, right? All these measurements on, I'm not, I'm not presenting anything on soybean. I don't quite understand what year though, it, it's not cotton and soybean the same year. It's not cotton and soybean. Right here, this was the second year of the study oh, right here is two, oh, okay. it, it's 2013. I'm not, okay. This was 2012, and I'm not presenting any of that because that's the first. I forgot to say, we grew corn on this field before we started any of these rotations as well. Here, so not, that, that was my mistake for doing that. Anyway, 12% taller plant heights, 
about 11 percent greater height to node ratio for cotton following soybeans and we're intercepting approximately five percent more of the incoming sunlight when we grew cotton following soybeans no difference in leaf area index or specific leaf weight for this year 2014 okay full disclosure everybody we made a mistake this year we forgot to put out nitrogen fertility on our cotton plots in 2014. It's uh, an issue of either we had, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen and it's everybody thought the other person wasn't going to put out the nitrogen. For whatever reason, it didn't get put out. So the data that I presented for 2014, you need to view that from the perspective that we made this mistake. Anyway, having said that, cotton following soybean, we're in, we're in the third column here plant 17 percent taller than continuous cotton 10 percent greater height to node ratio than our continuous cotton and we're intercepting 19 percent more of the income and solar radiation than continuous cotton no statistical difference in leaf area index or specific leaf weight 2015 we would gotten our act together by this time and we put we made sure that we put out the nitrogen fertility 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre, which is the recommended rate for our, our area. Uh, although statistically we're not seeing any difference in the plant height when we have cotton following soybean, numerically they were greater. We are seeing a 9% increase in the height to node ratio relative to the continuous cotton. And we're intercepting about 6% more of the incoming cell radiation than our continuous cotton. And again, no statistical difference in leaf area index or specific leaf weight. Now we're going to look at our variety or production system comparisons and this is for 2013 I'm only going to be presenting one year for, for this because these, these differences were consistent across all the years of the study. Delta pine variety is a very vigorous growing variety. It was approximately 19% taller than MD25 has about a 29% greater height to node ratio, 33% greater leaf area index, but the MD25 had a 10% greater Pacific leaf weight. There's no difference in the um, sunlight interception between those two varieties because for all practical purposes, both varieties were at full canopy closure. So you know, there's really no difference at that point. I should point out here that the differences that I'm presenting are most likely true genetic differences uh, and really probably don't reflect very much, if anything, of the different herbicide regimes that we employed putting out uh, with these varieties. Leaf chlorophyll concentration, uh, again this is 2015, when we grew cotton following two years of soybean, we've got a 13% increase and the leaf chlorophyll concentration relative to continuous cotton. This is not surprising at all. Uh, nitrogen is a component of the chlorophyll molecule and there will be additional residual soil nitrogen in the ground following the soybean crop and prob probably even more following two years of soybean. Cotton following one year of soybean was intermediate between the two. Uh, statistically, at the 5% level, there's no difference between the Delta Pine and the MD uh, variety in terms of leaf chlorophyll concentration. Although the MD25 would be greater at the 6% level, and this makes sense if you think about what I showed in the previous slide, that greater Pacific leaf weight for the MD25 relative to the Delta Pine. Uh, Pacific leaf, a greater Pacific leaf weight is an indicative of a thicker or a denser leaf, and that would have the possibility of holding more chlorophyll per unit area. Okay, moving on to lint yield. 2013, first off, an exceptional yield for lint production in the Mississippi Delta. Very mild temperatures, abundant and regular rainfalls throughout the growing season, and a fairly light levels of plant bug infestations for us. So we ended up with really high yields, the highest yields of my 25 plus years that I've been there uh, at Stonewall. <coughs> Growing cotton 
Following soybeans, we increased our lint yield on average 19% relative to the continuous cotton. This is brought about by a 20% increase in the number of bowls produced per unit area. But we did see about a 2% reduction in the lint percent relative to uh, the continuous cotton. Uh, no difference in the bowl size uh, from the different rotation schemes. 2014, okay, remember this was the year we screwed up and didn't put out nitrogen fertility, so no shock that our yields are off this year. It's also no shock that we get a pretty strong response when we grow cotton following soybeans. You know, and actually we've increased our yields by 87%. Uh, so Tyson, this follows right in with your talk about the importance of nitrogen fertility. This shows it really good here, you know, coming from the residual soil nitrogen. We increased the number of bowls produced by 73%. We also increased the bowl mass 10% relative to the continuous cotton. Now interesting, when the soybean was grown two years prior to the current cotton crop, we actually had an increase in the bowl size relative to the uh, continuous cotton, but this did not translate into a significant increase in our lint yield. 2015, uh, statistically no difference in yield between our rotation where we had cotton following soybean compared to continuous cotton. Uh, numerically, they're different, and this different would be significant at the 10% level, but it's not there at the 5% level. And, and nothing going on in terms of our different yield components either. Okay, here's the data before for the uh, yield comparison between the variety of production systems. And this is for 2015, and I'm only presenting one year of the data because um, there's, the results are similar across all the years. MD, 25 MD yielded substantially greater than the Delta Pine variety, over 400 pounds of lint per acre better than that Delta Pine variety. And that, that comes across both by large increase in the number of bowls produced and also a larger bowl size. Although uh, the Delta Pine variety did have a pretty uh, substantial increase in the lint percent relative to MB25. Okay, in, in all fairness, this Delta Pine variety was not very well adapted to production at our Stoneville location. It's very vegetative, very late in maturity, and did not put on much of a bottom crop at all. Uh, Whereas in contrast, the, the MB25 was bred at Stonville, therefore it's extremely well adapted for growth at the Stonville location. And again, these differences reflect most likely true genetic differences and not any differences in the different herbicide regimes that were employed uh, between these. Looking at fiber quality, there's really nothing going on in terms of a rotation effect on our, our different fiber qualities, no differences in fiber strength, fiber length, fiber uniformity. There might be something going on with Micronair. One of the two uh, rotation schemes where we had cotton following soybeans, we ended up with a lower fiber Micronair, but not for the second one. So I'm not sure if I believe that that's real or not. Uh, 2014, nothing going on with any of the fiber traits for our rotation. Again, this is a year of no nitrogen fertility. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what 2015 gives us when we analyze that data, see if there might be something going on with uh, fiber micronair. The um, variety of production system comparison, not only did MB25 produce more lint, it also had substantially better fiber quality. It's stronger, longer, more uniform. Uh, didn't see any difference in fiber micronair in 2013. 2014, there was a slight difference uh, with MB25 being uh, a little bit lower micronair, but uh, need to see a little bit more consistency before I, I think I believe that. In conclusion, when we grow cotton following soybeans, they tend to be taller and intercept more of the incoming solar radiation. They also tend to have higher leaf chlorophyll concentrations. Uh, with the exception of 2015, when we grew cotton following soybeans, we saw yield increases. Now, the easy conclusion that one might want to draw from this is, oh, okay, you know, 
uh, nitrogen fixation from soybeans are providing additional nitrogen for our so for our cotton therefore we're getting these yield increases but with the exception of 2014 you know we were putting out 100 pounds of nitrogen to all our cotton plots which is the the recommended rate uh, for the Mississippi Delta and this is based upon multiple fertility studies across multiple locations involving multiple researchers so it makes me wonder if there's something else that may be going on you know other than just the added nitrogen that could help to explain these yield increases that we were seeing is our soil microbial population being altered in a beneficial way by growing the soybeans uh, that could be a benefit to uh, cotton the following year now that this kind of beyond my area of expertise and beyond my skill set but you know Perhaps we could interest a soil microbiologist that would be able to go in there and take a look at the, what the soil microbial population is doing and, and maybe see if there's something going on. Don't know if that's the case, that's just me speculating. Uh, and finally, a few fiber quality traits were impacted by our uh, different rotation schemes. That's all I got, people. You, you got any you questions? You didn't mention it, but I assume you didn't have a variety by rotation no actually none of those were sniffed none, none of those were, no, both of them responded the same way to rotation both of them responded the same way to rotation i was we, hoping we, i was hoping there would be an interaction that would make for a more interesting story yeah. uh, but no we didn't see it unfortunately it'd be hard to nail down what the cause of the interaction is with, yeah. with those two contracts yes yes but without uh, without an interaction it gives you confidence that that's more the true response to the to the rotation that's true. That's true. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, I, I was, I, when I start out these studies and I have multiple uh, varieties and multiple treatments, I'm always hoping for an interaction because that, to me that makes for a more interesting story. I'm always hoping for no interaction. <laughs> <laughs> makes my life a lot easier. <laughs> Anybody else? I like the Joey. idea of of having somebody look at the soil microbes, but do you, what kind of seed treatment did you use? I just wondered if there was less disease, seed and disease pressure. It's a good question, Jody. Uh, I'm trying to remember what was on um, the Delta Pine variety. I think it was, I can't remember if it was Gaucho or Cruiser that it was had on it. It had the, yeah, both, yeah. both things had, had seed treatments. Uh, you know, the, the MD25, we increased ourselves in acid delinted ourselves, and I, I got some seed treatment from Bayer uh, to put on there. It's strictly fungicide for the MD25. The Delta Pine may have had an insecticidal seed treatment as, as well on it, uh, but, but the, the MD25 just had fungicide applied to it. But this was, like I said, the first year that we did this, when we were controlling plant bugs, we were just going, first time we sprayed for plant bugs, we just sprayed the cotton plots. And I got concerned because I was looking at the Delta Pine variety and I wasn't seeing any blooms or squares out on it. So I'm going, oh, oh my God, okay. You know, there's plant bugs that are living in the soybean plots and then they're flying out and getting onto the cotton plots you know later in the day or something after a, afterwards and the mb25 ne is an ectaralis which gives you a small degree of plant bug resistance to it so i'm i, I remember telling bill merritt said oh this is just a great example of the value of the ectaralis trait right here because it's you know protecting these things from the plant bug well we started spraying all of the plots you know soybean and cotton for plant bugs every time we went over still seeing you know no squares or blooms early in the season for this delta pine variety it's just very late and does not set much of a bottom crop at all uh, so anybody else okay Alan.